Tag, I'm Nawabin, and welcome back, language teachers, to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Emily. And in this video, we're talking about the desirable difficulty principle. And as a teacher and a student of several languages, I am really excited to talk about what desirable difficulties are, why they matter, and four fun ways that you can incorporate them into your language learning classrooms. If you don't know me yet, my name is Emily. I'm a linguist at Mango with my PhD in bilingual language processing. Well, mayoki wa satteoki, let's get to it. Okay, let's start with a story. Imagine one of your students is doing an oral presentation in the target language, and they are struggling to find a word in the target language. They're stuck. There is a palpable look of cognitive strain on their face. Let me ask you this. What response does this evoke in you as a teacher watching this? Is it feelings of secondhand embarrassment, empathy, failure? If you know about the desirable difficulty principle, then you may have also said productive or proud because what you're likely witnessing in this scenario is learning in action. So what is the desirable difficulty principle? It's basically psychology's jargony way of saying no pain, no gain. It's the idea that certain types of intellectual discomfort can actually be productive for the learning process. So the takeaway for teachers, help your students embrace, not avoid the struggles of learning. Psychology research dating back to the mid 90s has been consistently demonstrating that forcing our brains to work harder will result in better learning outcomes. And this goes for memory storage and memory retrieval. And we always want both of those. Now put another way, activities that require extra cognitive effort or difficulty can facilitate learning and thus they're deemed desirable, thus desirable difficulties. For now, we're going to dive right into what you can do about it. Now, there are infinite ways to incorporate desirable difficulties into your classroom, and I invite you to have some fun trying those out with your students. To get you started, I'm going to share with you four of my favorite go-to strategies. All right, starting with number one, sprinkling in error-based learning activities. Error-based learning activities are activities designed to help students discover common mistakes in the target language. One fun way to do this is to start every class off with a catch the error warm up prompt. Here's what you would do. You'd find a paragraph in the target language and you plant a common error in it. Now this task can be quite challenging for students, but that's the point. It requires them to build their metacognitive skills by engaging in error monitoring in the target language. Oh, and don't feel like you need to limit yourself to written prompts for this one. You can have fun with auditory prompts as well to help your students practice their listening skills. And of course, you don't want to include just any random errors, right? You want to strategically identify errors that you've seen cropping up in their work lately, mistakes that are common for learners of their source language, or even tricky L2 rule exceptions that you want them to know about. For example, that could be an irregular verb conjugation that they haven't been formally exposed to yet. Now, I personally like to tell my students at the beginning of the semester that we use these kinds of error-based learning strategies. And the reason that I tell them this up front is because a lot of students think that these kinds of activities are meant to really just trick the students. And that is not the case, of course. You're not there to trick them or get them. You're doing it because this strategy works and it's effective for their learning. So telling them that can help manage their expectations. Okay, number two, practice old content in new contexts. Now, I don't have to be the one to tell you this, I'm sure you already know, but oftentimes language learning curricula will associate a grammatical concept with a consistent context. For example, verbal commands often get taught in the context of household chores. Telling time is often taught in the context of daily routines. But spicing up that learning content in new contexts actually helps boost memory recall in the brain because it's a desirable difficulty. So have your students practice verbal commands not in the context of chores, but in the context of a social media post or do an in-class activity where they practice telling time by retelling the plot of a movie. Simply put, you can provide your students with opportunities for desirable difficulty by encouraging them to form new associations and new connections in memory with the learning material. Okay, strategy number three, avoid the tendency to oversimplify your speech. Many teachers, myself included, have the tendency to oversimplify their speech in the target language 
in order to match their students' current proficiency levels. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It actually stems from a very good pedagogical intuition to meet the learners where they are. And it can be a successful input strategy, but not in excess. If you oversimplify your speech, you might be putting your students at a disadvantage by stunting or stalling their progress in the target language. So in order to not miss out on some great opportunities for desirable difficulties, try to aim your speech for just above the level of where the students are currently at. Now, for those of you in the know, you may be wondering, is this similar to Krashen's I plus one hypothesis? If so, you're right. So Krashen's I plus one hypothesis is one of many ways to incorporate desirable difficulties into the learning process. But we don't have time to get into Krashen and his work on input scaffolding. So if you want us to do a video on that, then let us know in the comments. Before we get to the fourth strategy, if you're new here and you'd like to make sure that you're up to date on all of the awesome language teaching content that we have for you, come join the Mango Fam by subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. Okay, onward and upward to the fourth strategy. Get your students access to the Mango app. Here's why. The lesson sequences within the Mango app were actually built with desirable difficulties in mind. For example, if you were to take the Mandarin Chinese course within the app, you'd start off by learning the word for good, which is how, and the word for morning, which is sao xiang. And then we ask you to guess how you'd construct the phrase good morning. Now, most English speakers would order the words as they appear in English. So they're likely to say how, sao xiang, literally good morning morning. But, tricky tricky, the Mandarin word order is flipped. So the correct way to say this would actually be morning good or sao xiang hao. Now what's cool is that the app predicts this response from the user because it is a common mistake and it follows up with a reassuring note to help the student solidify this concept in memory. So long story short, the app has been designed in such a way that you'll easily and seamlessly learn these idiosyncratic patterns, irregularities, and grammatical gems in a way that is optimally efficient. For more information about how the Mango app is structured in line with other principles of SLA research, check out the link in the description. And bonus, when you click that link, it'll also give you a free, fun, goal-setting worksheet that you can use with your students to help them identify their own language learning goals. They're going to love it. It's time for a recap. So what are the two main takeaways that you should be leaving with? Well, first, we learned that desirable difficulties promote positive learning outcomes. Second, we identified four actionable teaching strategies that you can use to incorporate desirable difficulties right into your classroom. And before I review that list with you, let's put the desirable difficulty principle to the test. Pause the video and see how many of those four strategies you can recall on your own. Go ahead and pause it. I'll be here. Now let's go over them together. So they were one, sprinkling in error-based learning tasks. Two, practicing old content in new contexts. Three, avoiding the tendency to oversimplify your speech. And four, encouraging your students to use the Mango app outside of class. Okay, how many did you get? If you're looking for more ways to incorporate desirable difficulties into your language classroom, Check out our video where we share five ways to implement active learning strategies that optimize desirable difficulty for language learners. We've linked it for you in the description. Well, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please let us know by subscribing to the channel. If you have any desirable difficulty strategies that have worked for you in your classroom, then share with each other in the comments. That's all for this time on Adventures in Language. Auf Wiedersehen, we wabenem, and I look forward to hanging out with you here next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. I'm here to remind you not to forget to get your free Setting Good Goals worksheet, which you can access through the link in the description. In next week's video, we're talking about five do's and don'ts for cultivating cultural diversity in the language learning classroom. Well, my fellow teachers, I will see you in the next video. Bye.